Very good. Uh, let's start. You will have your hand weights and you will take a yoga block and just decide what position will work for you. For me, it's this position. This is a little too wide for my hips. This is, this works for me. So that you can activate your adductors a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, and then take your hand weights in your hands. And today is a Pilates class using hand weights, blocks, and some other props to activate our muscles. And we're going to approach extensive amount of standing. So just standing for a minute with that slight adductor activation, just rock gently backwards and forwards and notice a shift in the pressure and the muscle balance that kicks in depending upon where you place your weight. Most of us tend to be forward. So as we come forward, we can feel this area weight bearing. Can you get your weight onto your heels? And you may feel that you're almost sending your hips backwards to get there, which is fine because then lengthen up the whole middle of your back a lot. And you'll notice that the planes of the pelvis go down a little bit. You're taking the top of the sacrum and just elongating it down instead of being too curvaceous. And just lengthen up. So you start to activate the um, Pilates powerhouse. And just from here, turn the arms out. Notice as well that I'm not retracting my shoulder blades this way. I'm allowing them to come very slightly forward. Actually, I'm organizing the top of the shoulder right under my earlobe. So we're as beginning to get this stacking of the skeleton the way it's supposed to be. So the earlobe is above the shoulder. The shoulder, if I would take my arms straight down, is right in the center of my hips. And my hips, center of my hips, is going straight down in front of my heels. So not forward. This is where we normally live. We don't want to live there. We want to live right here. And then this big length in the middle of the back. So activate that as much as you can. And just bring the arms up towards the shoulders. And then slowly lengthen down. I know we don't have heavy weights. But see if you can start to find both the lats and there's a serratus minor on muscles on the side of the ribs. You want to start to feel them activate if you can. And complicate for us women sometimes. At the same time, you're gently putting tone into all the muscles in your body and getting longer and taller. So you feel from your heels, especially the lumbar spine length, and for our lean, no tucking. You want to just keep the lift feeling versus the pelvis slump under you feeling. One more time like this. And uh, now we're going to do something called zip it up. So the hands are in front, your shoulders are wide, and you will pull the hands up right to the collarbones and then bring them down. Bring them up, bring them down. So if your shoulders are not pulled back, I'd like you to focus on having very broad shoulders, a long back, and very slightly kind of, the, the diaphragm is going straight down. It's not here. You want to watch that. That's, that's the old Niedra shake. <laughs> we change our shape every 10 years. And I don't say because we're getting older, but because we are refining, at least I am refining different and new ways of living in my body. I know you all are doing the same thing. And, also, and notice if you're doing this right, you're activating a band, you're activating your pecs and the front of your deltoid. One more time like this. Make sure you stand in evenly on both feet. Now move the arms to the side. Turn them in again. We're going to do a few variations. So pull them up like towards the armpits and it's a little bit more awkward to do. So now we're going more into the centralized part of the deltoid or the shoulder cuff. 
And again, check that you're not uh, making your shoulder blades tight. One more time with this hand angle. Now turn the hands to face your thighs. And again, different sensation. Start to feel how even your bicep possibly is contracting as you do this. Whoops, get that shoulder off the elbow. The elbow. If you can see yourself, see if you can even out. Sometimes you have one hand that does something very different than the other. Now move the hands. I've, I've got my hands like this behind you. Again and up again. I think this is reminding you of double leg kick. But indeed, that's it, except we're not adding the extension. We want, we're saving that. We will come back to this. What you want to see if you can do is keep the elbows going out to the side. So notice if your shoulder rolls a little tiny bit further forward to do that, that's fine. Curl. Curl. And one more time. Bring the arms down. Now take one hand, I hope you don't have five kilos on you, you probably do, at one onto the side, turn it in. Now as it comes forward, let the shoulder blade get wide. How far across your body can you do? Bring it. Bring it out, bring it down. Take it up, turn the palm to face the front, bring it across. You want this contraction in your pec into your arm. Down, like a door that's opening and closing. See if you can find the band of muscle right here as you do this. Out, across, and out, and down, and out, across that high part of the muscle that's right under the collarbone. That's where you want to see if you can find the contraction and you will. will Facilitate it if you're not too lifted and arched in the back. You're just straight, you're kind of in the middle. And we want the front body as supportive of the skeleton as the back body. Sometimes we can air in the realm of too much arching. And down in one more time like this, out across the body, out again, and then down. Recheck your alignment. Are your adductors very slightly activated? My left one can see a lazy adductor. Going. Check that your weight is into the heel. Check that the rib cage is lifted out of your hips in the back, especially in the shoulder blades abroad. Now we'll be standing where may bring the arm up and bend it over. So this is no longer muscle, but now lift the rib. Keep the tail and the sacrum going downwards as you open up the side of the body. Just take a moment here to feel this beautiful stretch. Bring the arm out to deepen the stretch. And then bring the other arm up and over. So then you relax in, lift the ribs, see if you get both sides of the waist lifting, and then over you go. Stretch the arm out, up and down. Now, we'll add details to this. So I would like you to imagine like you have a big um, belt. So the, the ribs are separated from the hips as much as possible. I don't mind if your shoulders hike up right now to get that. I really want you to find that space and the fact that you have these obliques wrapping around. So Lift out of it. We're going to lift our first arm again and bend it over. Keep the lift. So this is a side you do not want to get short. So as you bend over, you keep this long. You're looking to stretch this side without giving into this side. So you may not get as far. You can let the shoulder go down, but don't collapse in. Now can you lift even more in the waist and extend a little bit more? Do not collapse. Keep out of that waist. Stretch and down. Lift the other arm up and bend it. Lift up both sides of your waist. 
keep the weight on the leg if you're bending towards, keep that waist lifted and then stretch out. Keep both sides active so you're not passive in your waist. Stretch and very, very good. Very slightly turn your feet out. And we'll do one roll down towards, well, I'm getting my hips square here, towards the floor. So you're doing a natural roll down. Now remember this waist. Please keep it long, which means as you roll down, you can't be um, tight. You have to keep the weight on. So let the shoulders come a little bit forward. Find your pecs. Do that high part of your back curving. Now, slowly, as you roll down, keep your spine long. So you're getting into this real C curve as you're rolling towards the floor. Take your time, opening up the whole spine. Lengthen your waist again and roll up. Roll up, keep the waist long. I don't mind right now if you help with your shoulders and you lengthen up and get more length in the spine. So again, lift the waist, start curving, find the front connection. In fact, let's do a few of these as we go down to find the contraction in the front of your body and keep the waist pulling away from the hips. So there's a lot of abdominal elongation supporting the spine as it goes down towards the floor. And then come up again, really pulling the stomach in and lifting up. So from here, we're going into our standing hundreds. If you want to, if the um, block, yeah, you look good. Let's get the heels together and bend your knees just a little bit. See if you can stay on your heels. Tighten the glutes towards each other a little bit. And now as you start straightening the legs, get those adductors to really fire, but stay on your heel. Lengthen the waist and very, very slightly, just for a minute, see if you can find your pecs and bend over just a little bit. So here we are in our hundreds and let's start breathing in out, in, out, little lower, in, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, exhale, go a little more, in, two, three, four, five, spread between the shoulder blades, in, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, one more time, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, in, Four, five, exhale, three, four, five, roll all the way down towards the floor. Roll all the way up. Stack yourself on your heels, lift the arms up just like we were on the floor. Lengthen the waist, strengthen, and come all the way down. So you're doing roll up from standing curve. Lift the waist and roll to the floor. Hugging the midline of the block as you go. So you're hinging and lengthening the skeleton. Roll yourselves up, lifting in the waist, lift the arms up, and lengthen out of the hips. And all the way down. We'll do another three. I'm going to take a break because I'm not overdoing my hip and roll down, drop your head. Roll towards the floor, lifting up in the waist, lift, lengthening the hips. Opening up your back body, very good. Go as low down as you want to, and then roll yourselves up. Lift the arms slowly up over your head, and all the way down. And one last time, lift the waist. Start to go down, opening up your lumbar spine as you go. Nice work, ladies. All the way down. Your head is down or leave your head is between your arms. All the way down. And then slowly roll up, unraveling your spine as you come up. Lift the arms up. All the way out. And all the way down. Nice lift in the waist. Let's take the yoga block out. Bring the hands just in front of you like you're holding a tray. Now notice my elbow's a little bit in front. 
my shoulders are right in the side. So we're not hiking them backwards. I'm keeping them right in the middle so I can get this nice lift of the whole front body. And without anything changing, lift one knee and actually just circle the whole leg around. It's kind of like single leg circles. Ooh, reverse. Ah. And put the leg down, stand on both feet when you're ready. Shift your weight, lift the other leg up, and five circles here. One, be very aware of the knee to the hip. Four, five, reverse. One, two, three, four, five, and let the arms come down. Very nice. We will go to the floor for rolling like a ball. So let's just get down on the floor and let go of your hand weights. Actually, no, let us hold the hand weights. Let's hold them. So you're here. You want the arms wrapped around this way. So you have this round shape. It's like how the tree, you could say. But with a C curve, and you'll go back and forth in this shape. So my knees are touching my inner arms. Here we go. Five times. Go. Roll up. Keep that length in the lower back, but keep it long and contracted at the same time. And again, roll. And up. And roll again. And up one more time. And roll. And up and bring the feet down. Now from here, we will go into um, roll over. I'd like you both on your backs, take your hand weights and really peg them down strongly into the floor. And you're not looking to be in this shape, but you're looking to get the back of the arms firing. And can you feel your ribs pressing into the mat? So there's a lot of activation. Lift the legs up to the ceiling. Push down into your head weights to roll the feet over your head towards the floor. Open the legs. Push into the hand weights to roll down. And bring the legs together. Recommit to the hands as you press up and over. Maybe you'll go a little bit further. Open out. Roll through the spine. Bring your legs together. One more time. Roll up and over. Open out. Push into your hand weights to roll. And bring the legs together. Now reverse it. Push down into the hands to roll up and over. Bring the legs together. Roll down. And again, up and over, press, press, roll down. One last time, up and over, press, press, roll down, keep pushing your hand weights into the floor. Find your anchor and lower the legs all the way down. Just roll them down, lower them down, roll them down, lower them down, lower them down. and press for me. Let's come back to a standing position. We're going to do our <laughs> next variation from a standing position again. Um, right. So with your legs together now, you will bend and bring, touch your knee and down. Out with the arms and touch your knee and down. Up, touch your knee and down. And touch your knee and down. And touch your knee. Whoop. And down, and touch your knee, and down. Now, 
double leg kicks or double leg stretches, I'm sorry. Let's bend the knees a bit and curl over and hold the backs of the knees or the sides of the knees with the weights. Now you will stretch the arms up and lift onto your toes. And bend and up. If you want to bend further and go to your ankles, you can. And so you can be much lower down if you want to be. And up. And down. And push into the floor to get yourself up. Heels together if you can. And down. Now let's go slow here. So keep the arms down when you come up. Feel the legs, um, the ankle, the heels, I should say. The heels should be like this. And lift up without letting your heels separate. You may not be able to go as far. It's just a different muscle group. Now can you get the arms up to And down. Uh, good job. So our next one, oh, I'm not loosening up everything. Next one is scissors. So let's get the arms up over our head. So they're long. It's a little bit easier than halfway. Now, one leg and one hand. And down. One leg and one hand. And down. I'm not going to do the legs for me. But one hand and one leg. And down. Hand and leg. And down. Hand and leg. And down, hand and leg, and down. Now, bring the hands behind your head. This is like double leg, bring the full leg up. Just joking, just joking. Heels together. Now, watch, hinging from the hips, straight back, come up, and then lift the heels. And down, uh, exactly. In from the hips, hips go back, flat back, come up, heels together to lift, and down. And hinge, and up, and lift, and down, last one, hinge, and lift. And up. And down. Bring the arms down for a minute to rest them. Just thinking how to do this. I think our knees got heavy weight. Let's bring one hand up here. And you will bend the elbow and the knee. The other arm is going backward. Switch. Bend the elbow and the knee. Switch. Bend the elbow and the knee. I'm not doing that much with this work. Switch. So I'm, for me, I'm really focusing on being in the middle. This is my, my stronger side. And switch. This is the side that goes wonky. So I'm not going to lift the leg. I'm going Get this side waist to work to hold the pelvis square. And up, last one, and close. And keep work. Open your legs out for spine stretch forward to square your hips. Bring the arms up and roll down, scooping your stomach and you will swing the arms behind between your legs three times. No, so swing, swing, swing. Roll up and lift. Roll down and swing, swing, swing. Roll up and lift. And roll down. I'm not going to do the next two. Roll down and swing, swing, swing. Roll up and lift. And one more time. Roll down, swing, 
swing, swing, roll up, and lift. Bring the hands down. Your legs are still nice and open. Bring the hands out, up behind your head with your elbows wide. Watch your not hyperextending the ribs. You just want the legs nice and even. Now, you rotate and take one elbow down, one elbow up. And back. Rotate, one elbow down. It's like you're trying to aim towards the knee, but we're opening up the ribs. And back, twist, swing, and back, twist, swing, and back, twist, swing, and back, and twist, and swing, and back, and center. In your hands to the side, rotate. And now reach towards your foot, the other foot on hold up. Reach, reach, so we're doing standing, saw, center. Swing and go down. I'm not gonna do this one. Reach, 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 up center, and open up. First side, reach, 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 roll up, center, other side, Reach, 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 roll up, center, bring the arms down. Very nice, come down to the floor. And before we do, we will do open leg blocker. Let me adjust my camera. Very nice. Get your magic circle. I think you all have a magic circle. Um, place the magic circle between your knees. With your feet to pick apart. Take your little hand weight. Lift them up in front of you and squeeze the magic circle and roll down a little bit and five curls. One, two, three, four, five. And roll a little bit further down. And again, one, two, three, four, Five, roll all the way to the floor, lengthen your body out, keep the magic circle slightly active. And again, one, two, three, four, five, and peel yourself up. Let go of the weights and open leg dropper just free form. So you're going to hold your ankles. I think both of you are good with this. And lengthen your legs out. Find your super. Very nice. And here we go. Five times you'll roll back. You'll roll towards your shoulders. Whoops. And come back up. And roll back. And up. Roll back again. And up, roll back again. And up one more time, roll back. And up, make the balance, bring them together, open them out, bring them together and walk down for the floor. Now, for me, take your magic circle Actually, I could be using yoga block. I don't want it so wide, but I'm going to place the block between my ankles. So you can have magic circle or you can have a block. What you're looking for is how can I get these um, um, inner thighs really firing well. So your hand will be by your side. If you want to, actually, you can take 
the weights because they add the dimension of helping you really activate your upper body. So you want to get as much squeezing feeling going on. And we'll circle five times to the right. Circle one, circle two, circle three. You're circling right around your sacrum as you do this. And five, reverse it. Circle one, circle two, circle three, circle four, and circle five. Very good. So keep pressing down and lower the feet all the way to the floor and let go of the weight, whatever it was. Bring the legs in and we will now move back actually to an upright position again. So standing, take your block again and place it between your thighs. So again, you have this activation of the thighs and just move my camera. From here, arms like this. So there's going to be this lifting in the arm Lifting in the armpits, long, long stomach. We're going to do single leg like, kicks like this. So bend one knee, keep the, magic, the block active, and kick, kick, kick. You feel your hamstring in your glute. Place the foot down and shift, kick, kick. And down, first leg, kick, kick. And down, other leg. Kick, kick, and down, lift your stomach up, kick, kick, and down, and other leg, kick, kick, and down, bring the arms down, get the block out, and now bring your heels together, so the feet will be slightly turned out, we're going to do the same thing, now it's even easier to get this wrapping of your hamstrings toward each other and your glutes connected. So bring the arms up again and keep the knees together now and kick twice. Kick, kick, stand, other foot, keep the knees together. Oh, this is hard for me. Kick, kick, and down. First leg, rock. Kick, kick, and down. Wah. Kick, kick. And as you're looking to get the hamstring and the glute really working to make the move. And last one, kick, kick, and down. Bring the arms down for a minute. And standing chest expansion. So one more time. Nice lift. Let's get that block between the thighs again to wake up the adductors. Make sure the adductors are really working and the legs are tracking down. We're going to have to get them now. You have them a little lower. So find that place. You want to find that place that really works for you and feels that you are anchored and balanced in the pelvis. And <laughs> what was I doing? The exercise. Arms are in front. Bring the arms right to the side. Now this is where you do retract. You pull the shoulders back, but don't do this. That's the hard part. Keep the waist lifted and then pull the arms back as far as they will go. Head to one side, head to the other side. Look straight, release the arms. And again, pull, squeeze. Now reverse your head, 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 straight, release. And again, pull, head, Head, straight, release. And again, pull, head, head, straight, release. One more time, pull, head, head, straight, release. And last one, pull, head, head, straight, and release. Bring the arms down. We are going onto our knees for thigh stretch now. 
So kneeling. Get the block back between your thighs. So you have, and look down at your knees. This is the trick part because we don't want the knees going, the thigh bones going in. We want them straight down from the hips. So I'm hoping whatever you're using fits your anatomy because we all have different um, orientations. Activate the, the adductors again. See if you can get them connected and can you get your glutes firing and then elongate up the, so the pelvic bone is moving away from the thigh. You want to feel this lengthening in the hip flexor. From here, bring the arms in front of you and hinge. So you get a big stretch in the thighs and up. And again, hinge. And up. And again, and hinge. And up. Two more times like this. And hinge. And up. And one more time like this. And hinge. And up. The next one we'll do is hybrid yoga audience. Don't tell anybody traditional. But we're going to do the lengthening of the quads and the hip flexors with a, uh, um, with a block. So please sit on your block. It's basically the equivalent of virasana. Here, check that your knees are going straight forward, just like you had to the knot together. You're taking your two hip bones and you're tracking them. You have a block under you you will figure out the height. First of all, when you're sitting, check if your feet are a tad outside the thighs and look at your own feet. You want the feet going straight forward. So even adjust, I adjust my toes because my toes tend to be kind of big. And you want the heel lined up with the middle of your toes. And we all have a story. So um, then, Start to pull. I'm pulling my thigh, my hamstring towards the midline and my calf towards the camera. So it's two different directions that we turn to show. I've got my hand in and I'm dragging. I'm dragging the hamstring, especially closer to the knee, in towards the midline and I'm pulling my calf out. So you're having a shift in the direction of the two muscles that go in the two different ways. You want to adjust that. Check to see that you feel your sit bones where they are. They should be on the block. Now, as you start to go back, the most important part is getting the sit bones under. So depending on what's going on in your pelvis and your hip, some of you can sling them way under and get this area open. And rather than go back, traction your waist as much as possible. You really want to use this to open up whatever's going in you into this area to lengthen and open it as much as you can. Very tight for most of us, not all of us though. So Linda, it looks like Come back up, Linda, for a minute. Come up and get your block higher. Can you get yourself higher up? Because it looks like you're not hooked enough. Your, your block is even higher. When you go back, can you use it? It's like if I could get in between somebody and I could grab their tail and their sacrum, I want it pulled forward. And you need to get, if you're tight there, if you're too low down, you can't get the hinge. So some of you may need to tie so. Now, Linda, lift your bottom for a second and then hike your bottom under, your tail even more under. Yes, just like that. And there is a place that this block really catches the sit bone and the tail and kind of can be used as a wedge to support the energetics of it being long. 
I hope you're both getting a nice stretch in here. You can go as low as you can. So I mean, if you're one of those people that can go all the way down, that's fine. But you want to really use it to open up this front line rather than do a back bend. Because it can look, it can become a back bend so you're getting to the floor, at, but not opening the hip flexion. So just take a moment here. And then bring yourselves back up and come off of this. And let's get you on your stomachs now for single leg kicks. Double leg kicks, I apologize. So here we are. Get the weights again. And see if on your stomach, oh, my camera's off. I would like you to attempt to replicate the same shape you were just in. So even though now you're on your belly, can you get this real openness right here and with the tail long. So this pelvis is being asked to be long in this position. Turn your head to one side and bring your heels together and spread your shoulders. So you really want that opening in the front of the hip. Slowly bend the knees. I'm saying slowly at first so you don't let yourself shorten because you want to stretch that area and kick three times. One, two, three. So there should be no movement in the head and the body if you do it right. And then separate the arms and lift the chest. Head to the other side and kick three times. Kick, 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 and long, and lift. And first side, kick, 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 and long, and lift. And other side, kick, 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 and long, and lift. And first side, kick, 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 and long, and lift. And last one, kick. Kick, kick, and long, and lift. Now hold this position, hold it, hold it, hold it, and come down. So lie here for a minute, let the shoulders come wide, get the legs long, reactivate this pelvis, ground it into the floor, and we will bring your head center and lift your shoulders and your head to kind of like the serpent pose in yoga that we do. Now, 10 times we're gonna do arm pulses backwards in this position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want you really to feel the process and come down. Take your arms sideways and we will do the equivalent of T-shape in on the reformer. So from here, lift, cover off the floor, turn the hands in, bring them behind your back, take them back out and lower down. Again, lift, turn the hands, the uh, nails to the floor, bring the thumbs together, take them out, and down, two more times like this. Lift, turn and connect. Reach them out and down. And last one, lift, turn and connect. Reach them out and down. Relax your weight for a minute and just press into a child's pose. You can do some out. Walk your hands to the right of your mat. Walk your hands to the left of the mat. And come to the center. Just my camera, so you're on your hands and knees. In this position, hips a tad back of the knees. You have an acute angle in here. 
And this is the, going to be the challenge. You want your spine totally straight, but you're not tucked. So for you, Arlene, you want to check the pubic bone. You want this length and then pull your stomach up. So you notice I'm not, I'm flattening my back in a sense, not because I'm doing that. I'm not getting the result from there, but by activating my oblique. So it's the whole waist area that you want to find. And then you place your hands under you. So this first part will do without weight so that you really get it. Now, retract the shoulder blades. So the, shoulder, the distance between the shoulders is really wide. Can you find your pecs, but lengthen your thoracic spine. Get the rib cage long and recommit to your stomach. Now, without anything changing, can you lift one side? So you lift, if you're activating this whole band on the side of the body, hold the position, and notice there's a more pressured right hand to left knee. Put the hand back, find the stability in your trunk, your powerhouse, and then the other the elbow up. And back, first side again, then, And back. Now the left hand to the right knee is working very hard. It's a cross of energy in your body to hold you straight. And back. Let's bring that weight right next to you. So you're still on your hands and knees. Re Restabilize this stomach and watch that you're not tough. You're just long. The shoulders are wide but you're not rounded. That's really the hard part. Now, hold one weight and hold, bring it here. Hand that's on the floor is gonna push to open your chest. So the elbow, I'm not hiking, I'm just rotating my rib cage. Real important, it's not a waist rotation really, it's the rib cage. Come back, open, parallel, open, Parallel, open, parallel, one more time, pushing to the hand that's on the floor to make this happen. And bring the hand down, bring the hand back to the middle. Restabilize, so get long sacrum. The top of the sacrum is flat. You're not tucked and really pull the stomach in and get the rib cage long. Then we hold the other weight and just bring it right by the, uh, the rib. So not, so Arlene, your hand should be under the elbow. The two bent with the arm. Under the elbow, the elbow should be lower. So the elbow is hugging. I'm gonna change, stay where you are ladies. It's a 90 degree angle. That's correct. This is too much, not here. So not here, not here, here. So the shoulder blades are wide. So elbow down Arlene, elbow down. Elbow down, elbow down more, more. There we go. Now, once you have that angle, now rotate just the rib cage. Bring it back. So the elbow is kind of glued into your waist, we could say. Lift it up. And back. So you're asking the rotational muscles of the rib cage to start to fire. They're really stagnant on all of us lift them up, we kind of float all around them and we want them to bring them back into the equation of our body. Lift them up, lift the wrist, pick up the neck, rotate it, and down, very good. Hands under you, we're just gonna go to balance the core front without um, weights. Step back with one foot, make sure your weight is over your head. Find your stomach in your back and hold the other position. Step out, so your spine is really long. Everything is held. Bend the knee in. Bend the knee in. Reverse it. Lay. Lay. Hold. 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 Knee and knee. First side again. Back and back. Hold. 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 In and in. And remember, check, you know, are you pushing away from the floor and still up straight back? You, you don't want that. You want this last one, back and back. Hold, 
Hold, hold. Linda, bring your weight a little further forward over your knuckles. Yes. Push, spread your shoulder blades. Push away from the floor and in that look together. And in. And just for a minute, sit back and just check if you have this awareness of a very long lifted waist wrapping you around. You're going to do bound support back. So you wait to by your side. I'm not sure if you can use them. Bend the knees and get your yoga block in your inner thighs. So it's just about knees and feet should be held to your hips. Let's start with the hands slightly turned out. Now, you don't want to squeeze the shoulder blades together today. You want them wide. Actually, let's bring them closer to you. So notice now my shoulder blades are wide. The tip of my shoulder is going forward. Can I bring it so I'm still, I'm not pulling them back. I'm really on my side body. You want to get as much of this stacking of the shoulder going up, the hand right down. And get yourself at first right with your hips. Well, let's start with the hips right between the, the hands. Now, from here, can you just lift, you push down, you lift straight up. Hold it, keep the chest long, lower it down. Again, lift. And down, one more time like this, lift. And down. Now, commit to the, the feet. Actually, let's have them up because now we'll start lifting the hips. But we, we start with this position. Now we roll the hips towards the whole angle of the shoulders change. You lift your hips up. Bring the hips back. Lower down. So you can put the base on upper body forward. Press. Hips go forward and lift. Bring them back, lower down, and again, lift, hips go forward, bring them back, and lower down. Very nice. Now from here, turn sideways, and let's have this position. So you have one foot in front, one foot in front on the side. And stack yourself up so you can get a sense of your hip and your hand and your whole body being in an even position. Your legs are out as far as you need to go because you're going to be pushing up. And your hand is here. So as much as possible, you want the rotation in your chest. There we go. Now, you're going to push into the feet. This hand is going to push towards the feet. So you're going to lift, arc your body. Bring the body back and down. Again, look at the hand and follow the hand if you can all the way. And back. One last time like this. Follow the hand as you are. And back. Other side. So hip, hand, and foot should be more or less a straight line. And can you get the chest lifting here? Once we started, I'm going to get the chest out. And push, and up. And down. And press, and up. And down, following the hand out one more time. Lift, follow the hand in this sideways bending. And down. Now we will take all of this. I'd like you to take your magic circle. And you're going to do a line. We're doing a little bit of the leg work. You now will be. Probably with a block under your head so you're not straining. Take your magic circle and place it on the inside of the knee. And
and the later from the floor. So you can a little bit of space. You want the knee to, if possible, to be going straight down. And this knee straight forward. So everything's at a 90 degree angle. This is a 90 degree angle, your bottom leg, and this is the kind of block out of the way is a 90 degree angle. And then you want to watch that your hips are even. So a lot of different things are going on. From here, can you activate your adaptive? Whoa, I have to work to get this adaptive firing and outside it. So you get the adaptive to work. Now take the bottom leg down, keep pushing in and can you lift it? And down. Lift it, keep pressing down with your top leg. And down. And lift. And down. And lift. And down. And down. Push down into the magic circle as you lift. So both adductors are working. And down. And lift, and down, and lift, Rah, come on, and down, and lift, okay. work, very nice, and down, let's take both legs out, and bring them forward, actually, and we will take the magic circle now between your ankles, so you're here, Check that today you have a wide space under your waist, and you are again going to activate both adductors and release. Press and release. Press and release. Press and release. Press. And release. Rest. And release. Rest. And release. I like your creativity, Arlene. Rest. And release. Let's have you shift to the other side. So a bit of a funny setup for this one. Your head is on a block. Your bottom leg is a 90 degree angle. From the knee to the hip. And your upper knee is on the magic circle. And your waist is lifted. So first you start in this bent knee position and press down. Check to see if you can get the, the adductors to fire in the top leg. You really see it, what you need to do to make it work. Press and press and press. Now extend your bottom leg, push with the top leg and lift the bottom leg. And down. And scissors. So now both adductors, I like to check to make sure they're really working. They can be lazy. Push and down. And push. And back. And push. And back. And push. And back. And push. And back. One more time like this. Push. And back. Take the magic circle between your ankles. And extend the legs out. Long waist and push with the top leg, but make the bottom leg work as well. So it meets the resistance. Push. And push. And push. And push. And push. And push. And push. Push. Very, very good. Let's go on to our backs and get your hand weight close at hand for you for your teaser. 
So lengthen out the spine, hands will be by your side, and your knees now are together. So there, when you bring your knees together, this is the trick. Can you do it without your knees rolling in? Can you keep your kneecaps facing straight ahead, which means um, if you need to each of us, each have a different pattern in the leg muscles and even the, the weight of our hips and the sides of our kneecap. So have a look and see how much you can just be sensitive to that, especially as we roll up. So now from here, when you take the leg up, the first leg, has it rolled in or out? Don't let it roll in or out. Keep it completely straight with your head and roll up and roll down. And again, roll up. Well, Linda, you know you're using the magic circle. I thought you were. Okay. Good for you. And up. Come in press. And Arlene, you need your knees together unless you want it. You're doing it up that on purpose. Other side. And lift. And down. And lift. And down. And lift. And down. Very, very nice. Arms over your head. Legs up to the ceiling. Legs to 45 degrees. And up again. And roll down. And up again. And roll down. And up. And down. Very good. Extend the arms out and the legs out. Roll onto your stomach for your swimming. So the legs are long. The arms are long. The pelvis is grounded. Lift your right arm and your left leg and your head. And head down, everything down. Left arm, right leg and head. And down. Lift. And down. Lift. And down. Lift. And down. Lift. And down. We're going to do full swimming. I'm letting go of my hand weights because it's too much. If you want to keep them, go for it. So lift your arms and your legs. And little swimming paddling movement. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Another set. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Relax. Sit into your heels and stretch your back out. Come up to a seated position and get your weight near you for your mermaid if you want to include them. And sitting to one side. Hold on to your ankles. Bring the arm. And bend towards the bent legs. I think I mean, that's it, wrap. Stretch out. And down, touch it off my other way, and lift, and bend, and out, and, and lift, and bend, and stretch, and out. So strive as much as you can to make the to stretch in between the ribs, and stretch. This last one move and then curl in. Just spread your shoulder blade, stretch back and reach, and up. Last one again, we're staying high, so the waist stays long. Open the ribs, rotate and open the back ribs, open the side ribs, and other side. This position, 
lift and bend and stretch and out and lift and open lift and stretch and out again lift and bend and stretch and out and lift and open your lips, stretch, and out. Last one, lift, and bend. Now, let the shoulder blade slide on your upper back to open up right in a high lift. Go back to the side, and up, and last one, lifting up, throwing the high ribs, opening up the shoulder blade, please. Open up, stretch. And come back. All right. So going into seal, if you want to use your weight, you can. If you want to improvise in any way, if you want to do free form, here we are. You slip the hands in between and hold your ankles. Anchor your shoulders and clap three times. Clap, clap, clap. Roll back towards your shoulders. Clap, clap, clap. Roll up. Clap, clap, clap. Roll back. Clap, 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 roll up, clap, 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 we're doing five, so this is three, back, clap, 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 roll up, clap, 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 roll back, clap, 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 roll up, clap, 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 roll back, clap, 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 and come back up to sitting. All right, ladies, you did a great workout. Very well done. Turn the camera off.